Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to our video on interpreting position graphs. So our last video was interpreting velocity graphs and today's video is going to be on interpreting position graphs. So let's get right into it. Example one, uh, the graph shows the position S of T of a student moving along a horizontal coordinate axis. So again, this graph just represents positions of a student moving right and left along a horizontal line. So you can see that time is measured in seconds and the student's position here is just measured in meters. Okay, so question one says, when is the student moving to the right? Well, moving, that's a verb, that's active, that's velocity. So I need a little cheat sheet here to remind you of a few things. So let's remember that V of T, velocity, is given by the first derivative of S. So we can say that S prime of T, so the derivative of the position graph, will give us information about velocity. So if you want to know when the student's moving to the right, you want to know when velocity is positive. Remember, positive velocities indicate rightward movement. So you want to know where S prime is positive. The derivative of S is positive. Well, derivative, as we've studied, represents slopes of the tangent lines of your graph. So we are basically looking for where the slopes are positive on the position graph. The rate of change then, which is velocity, will also be positive. So when are we moving to the right? Well, can you see that from zero to five, all of the slopes, m equals a positive. So this would indicate that that is rightward movement or positive velocities on the part of the student. So I'm gonna say for t between zero and five seconds and I am going to leave those open simply because at five we're fighting with a positive velocity and a zero velocity because of that corner. And I'm also going to assume that at time zero, when position is zero, we're not actually moving. So I'll just leave these open to the interior of that interval. Okay, number two, when is the student moving to the left? Well, in purple here, you'll see the same idea. The derivative of S gives us V. So leftward movement would be when V is negative or when S prime is negative since they're equal. So the slopes of the tangent lines would have to be negative on the graph of S. Well, when you look here at this graph, I don't see any negative slopes. So I'm just going to say the student does not move left. Okay. We can even put, put a justification there. The student does not move left since there is no evidence of negative velocity on the graph. Okay, number three, when is the student standing still? Well, standing still, I didn't have this on my, my cheat sheet, but really I could use the pink here, maybe just go over it in green. Uh, velocity will be zero, indicating standing still, when the derivative, S prime, is zero, so when the slopes are zero. That's standing still, when velocity is nothing. And you can see that slope is zero right here between five and 10 seconds. Now what I will do, so I'll tag it here between five and 10, but I'll actually, well, do I wanna close the 10? Let me think about this a second. I definitely don't wanna close the five because it's fighting with my positive velocity. Since this is my endpoint here, 
I would say I'm still standing still at 10. So I'm going to go ahead and close that from 5 to 10 seconds. Don't get too bogged down with your equal twos on these inequality symbols. I'll get the numbers at first. We'll work on that as we practice whether to close it or not. That takes a lot of extra thought. Okay, last question here. Graph the student's velocity. You can do this on the graph of above or draw a new graph. Okay, so I think we could probably do it up here. If I graph the velocity, I have to graph something that represents the slopes of the tangents here. And since there's just two line segments, this shouldn't be too terribly difficult. I would like to pick maybe a color that pops out a little bit more though. Okay, so I had said that the slope here was positive, but let's get the actual reading. So the slope of this line, it looks like I'm going up 25 and over five. So I'm gonna say the slope is positive five meaning that from zero to five seconds, I have to be here at five. So first part of velocity graph is gonna look like this. And that just shows that I'm at a constant velocity of five meters per second during the first five seconds. And then I stop, I stand still. So my velocity comes down because my slope is zero here my velocity drops to zero and stays that way all the way through here till the end. So I'm moving steadily five meters per second and then no meters per second. Okay, so that's how you can start to interpret a position graph. Because these y values, let's not forget, these just give us meters. So I, I haven't gained any meters through here. I stayed put, so if I stayed put meter-wise, didn't change my meters, then I'm definitely not having a velocity because I'm not moving. Okay, flip it over. We'll do another one. Example two says, the graph shows the position S of T of a student moving along a horizontal coordinate axis. Same idea, right, left, right, left. These are the positions in meters over time. So every one of these Y values just represents a meter reading. So again, if you kind of want to think about it, so at when time was zero, this student is 20 meters out, out away from, let's say, like the middle of the line or the origin. They're 20 meters out. And it looks like they stay there for the first second. They don't move from that position because at one second, they're still at 20 meters. And then they start to change their position. They're moving to the right, because at two seconds, they're at 40 meters. At three seconds, they're at 60 meters. So they've moved to the right. And then from three to five seconds, they stay put at 60 meters. The position is unchanging. And then it looks like they turn around, and they start to come back toward wherever they started because their position starts to shrink again, back to 40 and eventually to 20. So it looks like they get back to where they started. But the first question says, when is the student moving to the right? Well, we're moving to the right when the velocity is positive. Velocity is the slope of S. So right here, when the slope is positive, the velocity is positive. Remember, this is S. So this is S prime is the slope, which is V. So I'm going to say for t between one and three seconds. Okay, when is the student moving left? Moving left. Well, the exact opposite of moving right. So I'm looking for where the slopes of the tangent lines are negative. So that's gonna be from, you know what? Huh. Don't you love when Callahan does this? Is that supposed, I guess that is supposed to be like 4.5. I just, that just dawned on me. Yeah, this guy right here looks like it's 4.5. So I'm going to say for T between uh, 4.5 seconds and 6 seconds. That's when we're moving left. Okay, when is the student standing still? Well, that would be right here where the slope is zero, velocity is zero, velocity is slope. 
Uh, so I'm going to say T between 3 and 4.5 seconds. Okay, and then we have two graphs here. They want us to graph the velocity and graph the speed. So let's start by graphing velocity. Okay, again, I can do this right over top of this. Um, so velocity slopes of the tangent line. So here we have slope is zero. So I'm gonna graph a horizontal line segment showing zero from zero to one. Then it switches. From one to three, I have a positive slope of up 40 and over two. So the slope here looks like positive 20. Yeah, up 20 over one or up 40 over two. So positive 20. So I'm gonna be here to here in purple. Oh shoot, I shouldn't have went over that in purple. That's not part of this graph. It's just this guy and then this guy and then I'm back to zero from three to 4.5. And then what am I, negative, this almost looks the same. Am I, no, I can't assume that because I'm at 4.5 here. So I'm gonna have to find my slope here. If this point is 4.560, and this point here is 620, then my slope would be 60 minus 20 divided by 4.5 minus 6. So that's going to be 40 divided by negative 1.5 which is going to be negative. If I think of negative 1.5 as 40 divided by negative three over two, then that's the same as 40 times two thirds, <coughs> which is, or negative two thirds, I should say, which is negative 80 thirds. So as a decimal, negative 80 divided by three is negative, I'm gonna say about negative 26. Seven. Okay, now this was sort of a bad idea here because I'm <clears throat> under now. But that's okay. If this was positive 20, I'll just extend this. This would be about negative 20. So I'm going to come a little under negative 20 from 4.5 to 6. Okay, good. So that's the graph of velocity. So you see zero velocity, positive velocity, zero velocity, meaning not moving, not moving, moving in a positive direction. This means I'm moving in a negative direction or leftward direction. Okay, so this one's C above. And then number five, graph the student's speed. Well, speed is equal to the absolute value of velocity. So all I have to do is take my purple graph and reflect those parts that are under the t-axis, reflect them over. So it's really simple to graph velocity, or yeah, speed. So speed would be all the same, same, same. Take this guy, push him up positive to positive 26.7. So speed would just, oops, nope. Speed would be, that doesn't work. Speed would be, I keep forgetting that's at like 4.5 here. So this part would just reflect up for speed. So again, I'll just say C above. Okay, so interpreting position graphs, just a little bit different than interpreting velocity graphs, but hopefully it makes sense. Thanks for watching.